Welcome everyone to this March edition of the Uni Community Hours. We have a few things to present and discuss today, so let's get right into it. Well, first thing, right after <laughs> this introduction, there will be there will be a small surprise. Uh, we are also going to present Uni 202203, what's new in this release. This is not released yet, but we hope we will be able to release it early next week. Then Victor will tell us how the salt uh, bundle is now using to bootstrap and manage salt SSH minions. Cedric will present the Uni proxy as containers, this is something that is not part of 2022-03, but will be part of an upcoming release. And then, of course, we will have some time for questions and answers and anything you want to, yeah, not just ask, but something you want to comment, suggest, etc., etc. So let's get into it. First surprise. So. We are going to present some awards for the uni contributors of the year. Yeah, I know it's it's March. It took us more time than we wanted to get these ready. So you can tell that this is uh, uh, the, the, the these are the awards for the last twelve months, and we have two categories. So the first one is the best code code contributor in this case it's Stefan Blum uh, sorry I hope I pronounced your surname more or less correctly um, a lot of you already know Stefan because he's working very hard to get the uni server and proxy to run on top of Alma Linux 8 or for all purposes on top of any other enterprise Linux clone such as Rocky Linux he contributed heavily to a lot of places, not just changing the year specs, but even with some patches to the Java part of, of Uni. So yeah, congratulations for, for all the efforts, Stefan, and I really hope we, welcome, we can continue working on this to get um, Uni on top of Enterprise Linux, uh, well, soon, hopefully. Thank you very much, Julia. Pretty proud of that one now. <laughs> Thanks. It's it's already working, so just tying up some bits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know we still need to have a look at those problems with the um, Prometheus exporters and some other things. But yeah, I, I have to say that personally, I'm yeah, I'm very surprised with the with the quick progress of, of this task because it was a daunting a daunting task and not not an easy one. So congratulations for that. Thank you very much. And the second award is for uh, Lukas, um, sorry, Ma Ma Magauer. Ah, you can pronounce it yourself, Lukas, if you want. I see you're here. Sure, um, Lukas Magauer. So you already had it right. <laughs> okay. Also known as Lumarel at uh, GitHub and, and Gitter. In this case, we nominated him as best helper in uni because in the last months at least uh, since summer I, I was reviewing the the logs on guitar and the issues and he was helping a lot of a lot of people with a lot of different issues after the releases fixing some small problems reporting also some bugs that then later we could we could we could fix at uni so yeah as I always say remember that contributing with code is very important, of course, but you can contribute in a lot of other different ways. Helping people at Gitter is as important as contributing with code as well. So congratulations, Lukash. And yeah. of course, um, hopefully I can also help in the future as well. And I was quite new in the last year, so it was a steep learning first curve for me as well. So a great time. Mm -hmm. And needless to say, this is not just about a shootout, but I will contact you next week to send some merchandise. Don't worry, especially in your case, Stefan, <laughs> it doesn't have to be a t-shirt. I will offer you several options and then you can pick whatever you prefer most. And once again, uh, besides the congratulations, yeah, 
remember every one of you connected to this session now or watching the um, YouTube recording later, you can contribute in a lot of different things. One other award we were thinking about is about contribution to the documentation, but, uh, documentation, but unfortunately we didn't have too many contributions from the community, but that is something that can change for next year, of course. So again, congratulations, Stefan, Lukas, well-deserved awards. And with that, let's jump into the new stuff for Uni 2020 03. As I just uh, mentioned, this is not released yet. We are still uh, checking the test suites to, to see that everything is okay and we can confidently release, but we have some news there. The first one, I don't really know how important this is going to be for most of people, but we are bumping the XML, uh, sorry, XML RPC, not RPI, API uh, to version 26. Uh, there are no breaking changes in this new version of the API, but we had to do this in preparation for uh, SUSE Manager 4.3. Now, for most users, this will not cause a problem, but if you have any kind of um, script you develop for personal usage that is checking the, the um, API version. I know this wasn't the case in the past for a script that was, if I recall correctly, downloading patch information for CentOS. In that case, you will need to adapt your scripts. You can just trust that the new version 26 is going to be fully compatible with uh, the version 25. So it's a simple change in your scripts. Then we have some changes for the PostgreSQL um, database uh, administration tool SMDVA. We changed the default values for some of the configuration parameters for newer PostgreSQL versions, specifically starting with PostgreSQL 13 or newer. And in particular, there is now a new parameter that will allow you to enable further enhancements for um, those of you that are using SSD, NVMe, or any kind of fast storage, this will require manual intervention. You will need to run SMDBA with some special parameters, but the information will be available at the release notes. Then we are updating Grafana to the version 8.0. 0.3.5, if I recall correctly, right now we are at seven point something, and this brings a lot of changes to the data you can add to Grafana, but the, the biggest uh, the biggest thing that affects Uni is that now Grafana 8 has a new and improved alerting that will serve to centralize all the alerting information in a single and searchable view. Something interesting is that the alerts, uh, the alerts for Prometheus com compatible data sources are now listed under the Grafana alert section. So you don't really need to do any manual work anymore to add Prometheus, uh, Prometheus sources or alerts to, to Grafana. You can search for labels across multiple data sources to quickly find relevant, relevant alerts if you want. Uh, Uyuni, of course, is uh, using Prometheus alerts. So those will, those will be listed in Grafana. But something to keep in mind is that if you were already using Grafana alerts, in, that's what they now call the legacy alerting system, you should consider moving to the new alerting as soon as possible because at some point they will just remove the old, the old system. For all the information about the new monitoring system, how to do the migration, et cetera, et cetera, you, uh, you can just go to the official Grafana documentation and everything ex is explained there. All the other news for this uh, Grafana version, some of them, the, the biggest stuff will be also on the release notes for Uyuni. Now, Salt SSH, both for bootstrapping from web UI and uh, for managing clients as Salt SSH minions without having to install the Salt minion process, 
that is now going to use the salt bundle. Victor will, intro will introduce this uh, after me, if I recall correctly, the, the order of the presentations. Um, one thing about this is that not with this version, but with the subsequent versions, and this could be important for you, Stefan, the Pi to 6 compact packages will not be needed anymore, and we will just remove them because salt SSH, uh, sorry, salt bundle will be used in its place. And then finally, we are marking already some products as unsupported, namely Red Hat 6 and clones such as Oracle or CentOS. CentOS 8, because as you know, it's end of life since December, but of course you can easily migrate to, to Alma Linux or Rocky Linux. And finally, Ubuntu 16.04. By unsupporting products, we don't mean that we are going to break anything on purpose, but well, we will try to keep the, post the compatibility as much as we can, but at some point we know that some things will already break and we are not able to, to handle any fixes for those. But if the community can still want to step in and maintain those old operating system, then just ping us and we will see what we can do about it. And those are the news for this new Universal. So, well, questions about it, comments, quests. Very well. If we don't have anything else, then I think that Victor is next. That's right. I uh, hope you hear me well. And yes. The screen. Let me see if I can oh. stop sharing, or you can just directly share. Anything. I'll share, I think, entire screen, screen and yeah. Hope you should see it. Yes, now you now we can see your screen. Okay. And then um, I'm going to tell you some details about the salt bundle and especially using the salt bundle in combination with the salt SSH. As Julio mentioned also that uh, this salt SSH is also used to, uh, during the bootstrapping with the web UI in, in, with no any dependency what type of the salt system you are bootstrapping. It's, it could be the ordinary minion or the salt SSH system, but on time of the bootstrapping, the salt SSH with the salt bundle will be used. So oh, some of the artifacts on the screen, sorry. Uh, what is the salt bundle? Uh, actually uh, just a small background for s some of you if you are not aware what what this it really is and the salt bundle is a single binary package containing the salt minion itself and the python uh, version uh, currently it's 3.9 and the all the all the required python models uh, for running salt minion and uh, the goals of this uh, project is uh, to make it possible to run the salt version of on all of the clients independently on the uh, platform python used on this uh, particular uh, distro and uh, if the distro doesn't meet the requirements for salt it doesn't matter it makes no sense as salt bundle shipping all, all it needs inside and the ability to run uh, salt minion in combination with the other salt minion running on this system uh, with the original salt minion from this system connected to any other uh, product than uh, uni so we uh, make it possible to manage the same system with two different uh, salt masters in this case and uh, what is the additional purpose of this change is to limit uh, the number of code streams we should take care about and the difference in the um, versions uh, and the code base of the salt. Uh, currently we are using 3002.2 uh, which requires Python 3 uh, and count and uh, wouldn't be able to run on Python 2 at all. And uh, we also have Py2.7 compiled salt and Py2.6 compiled salt, which can be used on Python 2.7 and 2.6 uh, on different uh, systems. And uh, on running the salt SSH uh, 
system uh, salt sh handling this salt api it makes the uh, salt sim table deploying on the uh, salt sh client and this table is combi uh, is the combination of the two di three different uh, salt cost streams and it, all of, one of them will be used on the system depending on the python version uh, ex existing on this particular client yeah and is it's a kind of simplified schema of uh, working process of, of salt api and managing salt sh system is salt api through uh, how to actually was before but now the same schema is only used in case of uh, bootstrapping new system uh, when the system is not yet registered so we still has to create the roster files but only on in in case of bootstrap a new system we are actually getting rid of these uh, temporary roster files and uh, later i show you the uh, more let's say modern version of the schema but uh, for some of the uh, requested the schema is still actual uh, and the roster file could look like this one and it's mostly the simplest one and in case of using the chain of the proxies it could be a kind of nightmare to to compose this uh, roster file it could be like this and uh, it, it's kind of uh, headache to uh, try to assess the salt sh system with the command line in this case as we have to prepare these uh, roster files uh, almost manually and uh, what is the latest changes for salt ssh we are simplifying this uh, schema of um, creating the salt ssh session from java site we get rid of creating temporary roster files for already registered systems so we are using uni roster model for salt uh, which runs inside the salt api and uh, java just specify the roster type uh, set to uni and uh, salt api gets all the uh, roster data just directly from the unidb in this case and uh, then it operates with the salt sh client as i said it was before actually and a few more improvements we made uh, with the salt ssh we uh, handling simultaneous connection for salt ssh in serious manner we prevent a uh, simultaneous connection to run in parallel just to prevent uh, overwriting some of the uh, state data and preventing uh, running the states uh, at the same moment just because it could interfere and un almost unpredictable in this case and uh, we also preventing deadlocks uh, for logging and import leap python models as uh, it was quite possible before just because of uh, quite tricky uh, a way of handling the salt sage session inside the salt api and uh, we fixed this issue already and we also make make the roster model context aware so it uh, it's a kind of optimization, let's say, to prevent the reloads, uh, reloading the data a few times after it, and uh, it just the kind of um, imp uh, speed and uh, performance improvement in this case. We also extended the functionality of the pre-flight script by adding the pre-flight arguments to the uh, uh, pre-flight script, actually. Uh, to extend the, its functionality to allow passing the extra parameters instead of uh, creating the distinct uh, uh, preflight script for each of the client uh, independently and additionally we created a kind of wrapper for salt ssh command line tool we call it uh, mgr salt ssh it actually helps to get the access to the salt ssh clients with the command line i'll show you a bit later and additionally we are also using salt bundle to handle salt sage session now and also in case of as i said before uh, in case of bootstrapping new system from web UI, also salt ssh with the salt bundle is used and what is the salt ssh with the salt bundle uh, the salt bundle uh, requires uh, bootstrap repo to be created before bootstrapping to get this uh, uh, salt bundle package from the bootstrap repo on uh, 
running the preflight flight script on the, on the system, we should ensure that uh, the bootstrap repo was created before the actual attempt of bootstrap the system. It's the mandatory thing in this case. And uh, as I said, the salt bundles deployment with the pre-flight script, it, it's actually the kind of upstream technology for salt. And it was there, but uh, it was uh, just extended with the extra parameters. And we are going to upstream, upstream this change also. And uh, in case of using salt bundle, when salt minion is not installing on the system itself, but it just downloads the package depending on the system type uh, for DBM based it dev packages, for RPM based it RPM packages. But uh, these packages are not installed, but just uh, um, extracted uh, to the temporary directory. And uh, the salt code base and Python models and Python itself is used ex exact from this uh, virtual environment of salt bundle. And I think that's it. And I'm going to show you some interesting tricks with the command line tool. I just mentioned it's MGR salt SSH. For example, we can just use it as an ordinary salt uh, salt command for ordinary minions totally the same way with some uh, small additions uh, due to the difference in the um, in the type of the uh, system managed for example we can use a row command uh, command line like this. So in this case, uh, salt uh, code, uh, code base is not used at all, and uh, salt um, MGR salt SSH just invoke the salt SSH with the calling the row uh, shell command on, from the system. And uh, I'll also show you the placement of the salt bundle in case of handling the salt SSH session with the salt bundle. It's uh, here. I need to do for all of them, but actually a usual place for salting is this directory. It uh, changing the um, the hash according to the version of the uh, of the salt used on the master, and on changing the content of any of the code streams. Uh, salt or Py27 to, to 6 compiled salt is also changing and updating. And uh, additionally, we deploy the event salt minion here. And in case of uh, deploying this uh, salt, uh, salt bundle, we are using uh, Python uh, from this uh, salt bundle actually itself. Yeah, and that's it. I think if you have any questions, you're welcome. Yes, to recap, one of the most important things about this is that this means that now uh, SALT SSH on, let's say, for example, CentOS 7 can use the latest version of SALT that we will be providing for all the other operating systems. And you also need to keep in mind that in the case of SALT, they are in some cases, if I recall correctly, Victor, correct me if I'm wrong, they are deprecating Python versions, even if they are still maintained, especially if, even if they are still maintained in some uh, operating systems. So you know that, for example, CentOS, well, or Red Hat can have an old version of Python 3.x, but that doesn't mean that a newer sold version will still support that to be built and executed on top of it. Yeah, now, exactly. And now with the salt bundle, both for SSH minions and for regular minions, we get rid of that limitation. Yeah, and actually we are using the same Python and salt version for, for the bundle for all of the distros we are building for, and we are going to upgrade the update the versions for all of them as depending on the life cycle of the uh, distro itself for sure. Mm -hmm. So by the way, if, not, if I'm not wrong, Victor, we will see more or less soon a new salt on the bundle, right? 3004. Yeah, currently we are shipping the bundle in version 
3002 and we are going to update it to 3004 and the python version will, will be updated also from 3.9 to 3.10 very cool stuff so that means that we will get the latest and greatest from salt even on old operating systems so that's something really really nice and well who knows in the future if someone from the community wants wants to handle some kind of exotic operating system but even if that system does not provide python by itself the bundle could be used as long as we can build. Yeah, I totally forgot to mention that now the uh, Salt SSH is not dependent on the Python from the distro itself, so it, it doesn't touch it at all. Okay, any questions, comments, clarifications needed from anyone? Okay, in that case, next one is, if I'm not wrong, Cedric, with the unit proxy on containers, something really interesting as well. So I think you can see my slides, right? Yes. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, so let's go and start a, a real adventure here. I shamelessly took Dario's slides and enhanced them a little bit, but just a little bit. Um, oh, oh, I need to get this uh, proper window. So what are we doing? So we, you can see Uyuni as that sort of megalith. So it's old, contains a lot of pieces, they're huge, and uh, we want to ship them in containers. So what we're doing here is that we are taking one part of it, the proxy, and we're moving moving it into containers. And once we'll know how we how to do this and, and we'll have experience on that, we'll have more to to work on server containerizing. But so far only proxy. So what is a proxy? So a proxy is basically a machine, a VM or bare metal machine that runs uh, a few services like a squid, a salt broker service, an HTTPD um, service, and a salt minion. There are some other services, mostly if, um, using retail uh, for in a retail case but let's skip them skip them for the while and the clients are talking to the susan the uni oh i forgot to uh, to change the slides <laughs> sorry so they're talking to the uni server via the proxy they don't see the uh, the server at all so we want to cut these into something else. So what we are doing now is that we have moved um, a bunch of services into containers. So obvious ones are squid, salt broker, HTTPD. Uh, there is also a TFTPD service that is containerized. It's not fully working yet, but we're working on it. And we had to add an SSH service. Why? just because of what um, Victor has, uh, has shown us before. Because the server needs to access the clients via SSH. Um, so either for bootstrapping clients because it uses a salt SSH for that or because, because of salt SSH. You may notice that there's no salt minion there. So the proxy containers is not proxy proxy pod is not a container and uh, is not a salt minion we have put here um that this is running on a vm well you can you can also run it into any kubernetes cloud uh it's 
not tested yet on Kubernetes. We're focusing first on running that with Podman. So what are the differences? So you would be free to use these services on Podman or any Kubernetes um, cluster. The the proxy system, the proxy containers is not a regist is a registered yes a system, but it's a fake one. It will appear as a foreign system in the in the list. There is no more salt minion with there, um, and it's a bunch of containers, and that's basically all what changes. So how will it work? Um, well, as of now, we have an API well, space that is used by Space CMD. You call that one to generate a configuration zip containing a bunch of files that are read by the, the containers to initialize themselves. And that's it. So before the questions, Let's go to um, some demo. Uh, I need to get my browser back. And surely I will be disconnected, yes. Uh, so here I have nothing, no system, nothing. I will go on the server here and there are two space, walk, uh, space command subcommands that have been added. So here you have proxy container config generate cert. This one is to be used if you let um, MGR's uh, uh, cert tool or SSL tool, I don't remember the, the name, generate the, the certificates. So you have options here to pass uh, like SSL country, emails and so on. You see that there is also SSH port. We'll come that, back to that later. And most importantly, we need to, to give the proxy FQDN, the server FQDN, that can also be another proxy in case you want to chain them. The max cache size for squid and the administrator email of the proxy. We have about the same command here the um, proxy container config, but this one is not generating certificate, it's just validating the certificates that have been generated by a third party. So that's all it does. Is, but it, they're all ending up in the same place. Um, where is it? So here, let's create a container, um, create a proxy. So I need to provide the uh, SSL CA certificate password. And then it will generate the certificate. And the CA is the parent Uyuni server, right? Yes, this, this one uh, here uh, in the command here, or is just taking it by default is the one that is in SSL built. So the CA is the RHN org private SSL key. Yep. yep. And the certificate certificate for it is RHN org trusted SSL cert. So now, oh uh, no, it's this browser. In the systems, we see here a proxy. And you see that it is a foreign system. So it's not manageable. You see no, inter no tab, no hardware, no nothing. Uh, you see here the SSH port I provided. Uh, so this SSH port is the SSH port that the container SSH container will listen on. Because here in, in this case, my proxy is a VM. Well, is the containers will be hosted and running on a VM. And that VM 
already listens on port 22. So the containers will run another SSH service that will be listening on another port. And here we have uh, nothing yet. Let's run the container. So we, the, the containers. So we need to SCP the configuration file that has been generated. I'm placing it in etc uni proxy on the proxy machine. So there it is. I will just unzip it. And um, chmod 600 everything. Um, just um, for you to be aware, there are SSH private keys here. There are certificate private uh, private keys as well. So you need to keep these data secure. And there's also a YAML file here. It just contains a few data like the server, um, FQDN, email, and, and these things. Uh, to make it easy to start the containers, we prepared a few systemd uh, unit files. So here they're called uni uh, proxy pod. That one uh, will also have some dependencies. Um, so do we see them here? I'm not sure. No. So we, you see the pod is, is running uh, and you have one system D service per container. So, so you need container proxy SSH, for instance, there you have it. And um, the ports here, so you see 22 is the SSHD. AT22 is a pod, is a pod. We can also see the pods running here. Uh, you have them. Now let's use it. Let's bootstrap a client. Uh, let's, I need to remember the name of it. If I cleaned up my system properly after rehearsing the demo, it should be working. Looks good so far. Yeah, looks good so far. Uh, need to to clean up the SSH uh, known hosts and th things like that if you do it multiple times on, on the same machine, but. So you showed the scripted Podman way to to deliver these containers. Is there also going to be a Helm chart or some other kind of uh, Kubernetes way to yes. deploy them? That that is planned, but it's not there yet. Uh, well, if someone wants to provide it, we we would be really happy. Uh, as of today, we're running to to get the. The UI, for instance, the UI of uh, to create the configuration finished. Uh, we are also uh, working heavily on on getting uh, automated tests of of this feature. Uh, so hopefully, we'll be able to start working on Helm chart in a couple of weeks. So let's check and and salt remote commands here so we see the system can run commands on it and there it is and we can check that i'm not lying connection is on the proxy and on the proxy we can see it and it also works with salt ssh uh one of the good thing that 
has been brought here is that um, the SSH port on proxies will be configurable. But uh, since it's quite some dangerous work and, uh, well, we have other things to do, we haven't um, enabled that feature for regular proxies, just for containerized ones. But that could come later. Well, that maybe that'll be a compelling reason for people to switch. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> uh, so a question too, um, and this is great, by the way, it's, it's beautiful because that's super fast and a lot easier than me having to install a whole nother machine and run configure dash proxy and all that stuff. So I, <clears throat> what about upgrades? How does that work? So when the next Uyuni flavor comes out, uh, how does the proxy get updated? Uh, well, the proxy images are defined um, here. It's in etc. This is de defined in the systemd scripts, systemd package that we're, we're doing. Uh, so here we have the namespace of the um, the images that that are pulled. So as soon as they're they are updated, you can Podman pull them and and they will be used. So that um, would be a, a restart of the service would pull the new images or how does that work? Uh, well, as of now, I think it doesn't restart. It doesn't pull automatically the updates, but that may be considered. Okay. It pulls them automatically at the first run, but um, I, I had to run it manu manually when I force pushed some update in the images recently for testing. And here you see the in the registry, so this is a branch of, of mine, but you, we will have a system, system management, systems management, a uni stable containers, a uni. Uh, here for uh, released images. So every at every release, we get new images there. So the the namespace does uh, will not need to be changed any at all. So that's about it. And here we have some uh, some variables here to configure where to put the squa the squid cache. Uh, TFTP boot directory, so on. So some of this can be persistent storage. Is that the the target? Yeah. yeah. Or if you already had a, a proxy con uh, that had data and you want to reuse them, you can just point to this quit cache to ease the uh, migration. Right. So that was about it for me. Do you have any question? Two clarifications at least from my side. The first one I already told during the introduction that this is not going to be part of 202203. 20, <clears throat> well, it's, it's not part completely of it. not part of it. <laughs> well, uh, here's the thing: is not announced as part of the release no. notes. Still, no. still, the SLI 15 and OpenSUSE 15 client tools will have the package for the systemd services to start the Podman containers, and the images should be there when I promote master to stable next week. So. It will not be supported in any way. As Cedric already told, there are still some things that do not work, such as the FTP, if I recall correctly. But if you want to play around a little with it, that's something you will be able to do already. And in fact, we invite you to give it a try and let us know what you think or what problems you, you can find that are things that we are not aware of already. The idea is to have something more st 
table, I would say for the next 04 or 05 Wii U version. Uh, so the 04, other... 04 yeah. should be already mm -hmm. stable enough. Uh, including the TFTP container? Yes. Okay, very good. Nice. And the other thing, well, it's clear from what I already told for now, the system this service package is only available for SLE 15 clients and OpenSUSE Leap 15 clients, as long as they have Podman available. Uh, for now, you cannot run this on a, let's say, um, Rocky Linux 8 client. Well, um, if someone, if, if if someone wants to play around with the package and, and it should not be too hard to tweak the system D package to, to get it working on these on, on another on another distro. But we'd rather have you spend the time on Kubernetes enablement. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So of course, if someone from the community wants to have a look at this. Well, you could very well even use deb build to build the the system the package for Debian or Ubuntu if you want, making the required changes. But at least for, for now, as the Susamana development team, we will be focusing, of course, on running this on Kubernetes. And uh, well, I, a, a note for Stefan, um, <laughs> the package doesn't even build for Alma Linux uh, 8. Yeah, uh, as of today, so yet you said very good. There, there <laughs> are some system D, uh, system D macros that are not on on sent uh, on this distro. So, if you want to have a look, then you know there's something broken there, but it's not not so, something urgent. <laughs> like um, Dan and Julio said, Kubernetes is the priority now. Yeah, and, and still the good thing for you, Stefan, is that this, this package is for the client tools. So you will not see it failing at systems management to Unimaster at the main project. No. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I put it to the backlog somewhere. It's a low priority. <laughs> <laughs> and just for the recording, so um, a question on the chat. It will the other plans to containerize uni itself so yes there are plans um but we expect a lot of troubles uh for instance we had to move some of the uh files that are um used by the salt master to the database and there are more to do and there may be some more surprises on the way so Cutting such an old megalith is tricky. Any other question? If not, then don't be shy. Remember now we have like 10 minutes for any other questions, comments, suggestions you have outside of what we already discussed or of course we, or of course we can go back and discuss something we already did so don't be shy well i have a question for stefan more uh, more uh, so uh, about the velocity package did you have um, have had a go at, at it or um, Ideally, I yes. have I have the yes, thing and, pending in for month. <laughs> um, I, I think you can already uh, commit it. I I did have um, uh, what is it uh, nah, what is it called? Uh, one of those custom packages running. It it stopped running probably because of some dependencies that I played around with. But it was running like for four months or something like that. And suddenly it stopped working. That's the miracles of OBS. Um, I get it working again. That's not. Yeah, that, that, that's not the issue. So you, I guess you can push it already. Okay. Yeah, we had the uh, we had the um, the problem, the, an issue with twenty twenty two oh two on uh, scraping clients for Prometheus. 
is that going to be is that fixed in 2022-03? That was in the issue list, uh, and there it's gotten several activities. And somebody said there was a pull request, but I'm I'm just curious because they don't even show up in Prometheus at all, and you get a um, errors on the service that it can't scrape it and and it's in the issue list i was in parallel in replying to to the chat so i missed part of the question but i think the question was about prometheus right yeah prometheus the 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 register to uni client scrapes isn't working and that's that's it's out there as an issue i know I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's an issue that Vitek was working on and maybe it was related to a serialization problem. If we are talking about the same issue, then yes, this will be fixed on 2022-03, but not sure if we are talking about the same. Yeah, I saw Lucas in the chat reference to he because he opened the issue, but... I ran into it. it was driving me crazy. Uh, like I look at my Prometheus, I don't even see the client scrape job. And then you go out to the Prometheus server thing and you get a bunch of, see it, find out a bunch of errors. And let me see it for a moment. Yeah, Abed's on it. Yeah. Uh, so uh, hold on. Because I have this in my board. I have something that was the uni service discovery returns errors that I think it's related to this was reported at the mailing list, right? After the upgrade. Yeah, to 20... mm -hmm. yeah is You're that right. the issue? Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, we did fix that one. Yeah. Hmm. Then, yes, uh, Donald, this will be part of 2022 03. Great. It's good to know. Okay, more questions? Well, just another question, but a reminder that uh, Google Summer of Code has started. Well, um, Google has published the listed organizations and OpenSUSE and Uyuni are part of it. So just don't hesitate to push your nephews, sons or daughters and nieces to, to participate with us. Or your neighbors. Yep, of course, we will be very happy to welcome anyone that wants that, that wants to participate. And uh, if I'm not wrong, have it. Even we will be able to to dedicate a specific time from our team to mentor such uh, such people. So please invite everyone that could be interested. Okay, so it's almost time, almost five, and I guess that pretty much every everyone wants to start the start the weekend. So if we have no further matters to discuss, then yeah, I would say that this session of the uni community hours is uh, over. Stay tuned for the uni release next week as always remember that we can talk at gitter or the mailing list the github issues remember that contributing can be done not just as you saw in the first topic during the uni awards with code but also helping other people fixing the documentation or even fixing the website because it's on a github repository as well and it's just html and some css and with that Thank you everyone for attending. Congratulations again for Stefan and uh, Lukas. And see you once again in one month. Have a nice weekend. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. See ya. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.